Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki Style Chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere. Love Talk Radio. Well, good evening, folks, and thank you for tuning in with me once again to another edition of True Conservative Radio, and of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost, and once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. I know that I've been uh, doing these shows consecutively, uh, excuse me, uh, consecutively as of late, yeah, I'm getting tongue twisted up in here. Uh, but, folks, I think it's deemed necessary uh, to continue to do these broadcasts at all opportunities possible. And I don't know if you, as an American citizen, uh, you know, whether you've got your head up your derriere or uh, you're tickling your dingleberry ridden poop chute and thinking it's a great day in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, it isn't. So I feel that it's necessary that uh, it is. Uh, that, that I continue to have these consecutive broadcasts. So, folks, the best way to figure out when I'm going to conduct these sporadic broadcasts, because I, I don't really have a set time, once again, the best way to do it is to follow me on Twitter, and that's twitter.com slash ghostpolitics. And uh, before we get started with today's program, or this evening's program, I'd like everybody to please bookmark the blog at ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. Now, folks, we're going to get into a variety of different issues up in this uh, edition of the True Conservative Radio Program, number 132. I know that a lot of people are tuning in live because the description of the program has the uh, statement that the American public sucks. And I know that everybody who's an American that happens to see this program are probably getting a little offended. They probably have their garter belts up their crustated anal passage thinking that, oh, how can somebody say that about America? Uh, well, folks, I- I'm hoping that it maybe lights a fire under that fruity dairy air of yours and understanding that the precarious times that we're living in are definitely historical. And I've tried to put it in layman's terms as much as I possibly can whenever I conduct these broadcasts. It's just very unfortunate that it goes completely over the head of most of you nimrodic buffooneries. And that's why I insist, and I will continue to uh, state, that the American public sucks. Now, granted, folks, we do have our exceptions to the rule out here. Uh, But like I've always suggested, like I've always said, a group is defined by its majority. And the majority of the American people at this point in time are nothing but a bunch of idiot, moronic buffooneries that care less about their own liberties and care less about their own freedoms. And to be completely honest with you folks, I don't really know what in the blue hell they do care about. But what they don't give a crap about is the future of this country and the idea that they grew up on to continue on to their children and their children's children and so on. And I think that uh, the individuals that are coming out, coming to rise amidst all this liberal infestation, I mean, liberalism and feminism just infest the land out here. We've got uh, great American patriots like Hannah Giles and James O'Keefe uncovering the just the, the festering, disgusting class struggle, the class struggle that's being implemented upon the United States citizens by this liberal regime. And believe me, folks, this is all calculated measures. I, I, I'm, I'm giving the liberals complete credit in their political strategy. Even though I'm exposing it on this program, if you happen to be an avid listener, I'm exposing that these liberals are utilizing this open rate on the American taxpaying system, allowing Wall Street just to uh, open raid the American taxpaying system, give their executives all kinds of billions upon billions of bonus dollars this Christmas so they can buy flying cars and 
uh, you know, RVs they can float on water and go fishing on and all this other malarkey. And they also threw some crumbs at the entitlement seekers and the entitlement collectors out here in America, which seems to be growing more and more as each day goes by. And meanwhile, we have the middle class and the upper middle class, uh, the two classes of people that seem to always pay the brunt end of all these ambitious political motives of all these regimes that have taken foot in this country. And what does the upper middle class and the middle class do to assert their political views, to assert their political ideas? They do absolutely nothing. And that's why I continue to do these broadcasts, and I try to do them as much as possible, because if we don't, if somebody doesn't try to slap around the American people a little bit, like they were some $3 whore bag, uh, you know, I don't know what in the blue hell is going to happen to this country. I, I'm not joking. This is not a joke. I know that there's probably people laughing, think that this is some facetious uh, commentary out here. I, I'm just trying to wake the American people up into realizing and I'm not trying to wake all of the American people up, all right? I'm not trying to wake them all up. I'm just trying to wake up the middle class and the upper middle class, the bourgeoisie, what Marx like to classify those that fit under that category. I'm talking to those out there that aren't collecting entitlements, that are working for a living, that, that are doing what they can to make a contribution to this country. All you other morons, and, and, and this includes the, the poor in America, and also the Wall Street bankers and all these idiots that raided the American taxpaying system, they are one and the same. They're mooching off of the middle and upper middle class. And meanwhile, the middle and upper middle class are so stupid and so dumbfounded and so ignorant that, lo and behold, they don't understand the complicated problems that are unraveling right before their very eyes. And I don't understand why nobody else is angry as I am about this. All right, I mean, I'm a part of this bourgeoisie class in the upper middle class. You know, I mean, I know that uh, even if you do have a million dollars in your bank account, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're rich, okay, pal? I mean, it, the banks were about to go under about this time last year. So don't give me this malarkey that, yeah, baby, I got five million in my bank account, baby, I'm all good. You ain't nothing, all right there, a uh, little flip. You, you're, you ain't nothing because the bottom line is, is the only thing that legitimizes this economy, the only thing that legitimizes this idea of exchange of goods and services for monetary uh, exchange, for, for cash tender, it's going to go and implode in our faces if the middle class and the upper middle class doesn't take their heads out of their clogged up poop chutes and start realizing that they need to start getting a little bit more politically active out here. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting in, in by any means, because all of a sudden, you know, folks, because I'm highlighting these contradictions within our society, because I'm highlighting these, you know, idiotic moves that are uh, going on not only by our government but by the American people, all of a sudden I'm construed as like some sort of an underground conservative, as if my ideas are somehow far-fetched, as if that they're somehow out of sync with what traditional America used to be. And the only reason that it's changed from that particular social fabric, folks, is because it's been induced by liberal propaganda. You know it, and I know it, and if you don't know it, you've probably been so anesthetized with it that you're just begging for your own serfdom. You're begging to become a peasant out here. It's what, it's what makes me sick about this country. You people are so ungrateful. You are ungrateful pieces of garbage out here. And this is why I say that the American public sucks. I know I get a lot of emails from a, a bunch of hyper-patriots that think that they're contributing to their country because they've got a damn flag hanging out of their house or on their stupid car. But, folks, that's not a patriot. All right? A patriot is somebody who participates in the government or in a government that was made by the people and for the people. Somebody who's well-informed. Somebody who's not some abstract thinking idiot that just believes that black and white is the only option when it comes to the political spectrum. Understanding that you have to actually gain knowledge on, on a variety of different issues when making calculations of political strategy. Because folks, when you go out and vote, I know that the liberals make light of the vote. I, I know that you know the, the, 
they got you anesthetized with Hollywood. They got you anesthetized with uh, entertainment. They got you anesthetized with all this garbage. Uh, but they don't want you to go out and actually vote as a mass people. That's why we're one of the lowest, the lowest turnout rate of voters in the world. And we're the ones promoting this idea of electing our officials, this idea of democracy, right? And you see, folks, you know, who exactly goes and votes? Well, you know, if you saw in this last election, uh, I mean, a lot of things have come about about how people are organized to vote. I mean, you've got uh, partisan, all right, mind you, partisan groups that are going out with buses, knocking on doors, saying, hey, come on out, we'll take you a ride, we'll go vote, and we'll, afterwards we'll buy you a taco, we'll give you, a, you know, uh, whatever, a soda, we'll, we'll do all this ridiculous malarkey with you, no matter who you vote for, but come on down, yeah, let's go. And meanwhile, while you're on the bus, you got a, a whole bunch of implanted wackos saying, yeah, we should vote for the Barack Obama and the liberal regime. I mean, this is how politics works nowadays. Power of suggestion, all right? Power of suggestion. So all you folks that are in this chat room right now, because I see there's a lot of live people in the chat room, and there's probably going to be a lot of people in the archive listening to this program. And if you're taking offense to the title of the program, The American Public Sucks, well, tough titty, all right? Tough titty, you stupid, imbecilic slap nuts. All right? Why don't you look at yourself in the mirror and understand why somebody would say that? An American would say that. A conservative American would say that. And you have to understand that right here, right here, just take a look outside your door. That's why we're in this situation. So I don't really give a crap who likes my program. I don't care who appreciates my program. Never in my life, folks, and I've lived on this earth a, a, a damn good bit of years. Let me tell you that. I've lived on this earth a damn bit long bit of years, never in my life would I think that I would be considered radical or underground. Uh, I mean, you know, some of the things that I'm reading about me out here on the Internet, I, I, I mean, I just, are you kidding me? I mean, I'm underground? A conservative American? Somebody who believes in the Constitution? Somebody who, who believes in the American family? Somebody who understands the uh, you know, uh, social ills that have now become the social norm. I'm an underground Internet radio host. I mean, that's what I've been classified out here, an underground radio host. Oh, I mean, are you kidding me? And I've got, you know, and I don't mean to be uh, going off about uh, my own personal issues as it pertains to the show, but... You, you people that are listening in, y'all are good people, so I'm going to go ahead and let you in on this. I think it's rather disgusting that, you know, every group in America that's politically active right now, every single group that's politically active is trying to take pop shots at yours truly. Uh, I mean, all these octomom secreted political idiots that are out here with picket signs and bullhorns and all this crap, they're trying to throw as much garbage and as much crap at yours truly to see what sticks out here. And what's really unfortunate is that you've got the left, which, of course, I expect ridicule from the left. I expect this type of vile and disgusting uh, displays of showing your liberalism. Uh, you know, I'm used to the personal attacks and the slanderous lies from a bunch of bedwetting liberal long hairs, but then you've got these teabaggers and, and these supposed Republicans out here who have just clear turned left wing folks. I mean just look at the crux of their uh look at the crux of their legislation. Look at the all the main points and the main ideas of every bill that they pass and you compare it to any liberal legislation. There's no difference I mean, this is a Republican Party that claims that it doesn't want government spending. It doesn't want all this crap, and neither do I. I mean, let me tell you, I, I'm, a, I'm the last person that wants government spending. But then you have them touting how they're saving Medicaid, how they're saving Medicare. I have John Cornyn out here in Texas, where I'm from, just throwing ads on the television set. I mean, he's already won election. I don't know why he's throwing ads out. 
Uh, but he's throwing hands on the television set saying, uh, well, not him, but some broad narrating the damn commercial is saying, John Cornyn is out there saving Medicaid and saving Medicare. Call him today and thank him for fighting for seniors and all this crap. I mean, this is supposed to be a, a supposed conservative Republican, right? And yet this moron is trying to pat himself on the back with whoever's funding those ridiculous uh, advertisements, trying to get people to thank him for saving a government-funded Medicaid Medicare system. It's just hypocritical, and it's just ridiculous. I mean, is this world gone mad? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, folks. I, I mean, am I the one loco? I mean, is this why people are classifying yours truly here as an underground host? Underground. I mean, you know, that, that's in comparison with those sleazy, disgusting leftists in the 70s and the late 60s. You know? I mean, I'm being classified in the same breath as these, you know, David Ayers, these Chicago 7, these weather underground. I mean, that, that's what I relate. That's what I think about when I, when I hear underground, when I hear radical. Folks, what I'm saying is, is it has nothing to do with being radical or being underground or anything of that nature. I'm just talking about uh, just caring about your country once again understanding this constitutional republic and having the people understand that it is their duty it is their duty to go out and participate in this government properly but you see you're not going to get people to do that i mean you know these people are more busy worried about getting more handouts i mean i have I mean, I don't know about you folks. I mean, I, I've been flipping the boob tube and searching the internet. I have seen more socialist propaganda in this frame, in this time frame, in this time in America than I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, I, I was, I don't, I don't remember, you know, the FDR era. I was around then, but I didn't remember it. I, I didn't remember the po the politics around it. But just reading about it in history, it was just completely disgusting. Uh, it's the same thing that's happening here in America. We don't need more government interference in our lives, folks. It's government. It's the government that has screwed this crap. And you see everybody, you know, on the Internet, I got blogs, I got feminists, I got uh, left-wingers, right-wingers, I got Alex Jones worshipers. I got these idiots from the uh, Truth Now movement. I got so many people attacking yours truly out here. It's wonder how this even came about. I mean, I, I'm just saying let's bring back America again, and all of a sudden I'm the big bad wolf. I'm just talking about let's put an emphasis on the American family again, and all of a sudden, you know, you're comparing me to the freaking Taliban. And all I'm saying is that, you know, America needs to take responsibility for their own problems and for their own issues, and all of a sudden I'm the equivalent of, you know, some damn anarchist or something. It's disgusting. Every single facet of the political spectrum right now, folks, is attacking me. I mean, you should, you should read these emails. It's disgusting. You should read what they write of me uh, about me on these forums and these blogs and all this malarkey. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of conservative Americans out there that understand exactly what I'm talking about. And they comment on uh, my blogs. They comment on the uh, website. They comment all in forums all across the Internet. And I thank you for that. All right? I thank you very much for that. Uh, but, folks, the majority of America is in complete peril. Uh, the majority of America out here is in complete disarray, and what we need to understand is we need to come together. And the only way we're going to come together, and I'm not talking about some liberal kumbaya, hold hands, and all that crap. I'm talking about the individuals that should have more political clout than these damn uh, you know, single whore mothers who shit out eight kids and get $8,500 a month in government subsidies. All right? Uh, 
Yeah, I'm talking about these, uh, you know, stupid people that claim to be poor in America and that are getting all this housing voucher programs so they can move into my neighborhood out here with their 12 kids, uh, where they can get these uh, free cell phone vouchers. They've got free broadband. I mean, it's just disgusting. And I'm paying for it. The upper middle class and the middle class are paying for it. We're also paying for these damn Wall Street assholes who uh, nearly threw the whole financial system into peril. And, and yet, what are, what are we supposed to do as, as uh, middle class and upper middle class people? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. This is what the liberals want. They want class struggle. That's right. You people out here in America are stupid bunch of idiots. Literally, all of you. I mean, not all of you, most of you. Not all of you. I mean, I'm sorry that I'm talking out of anger in some uh, cases, folks. I know not everyone is a complete buffoonery out here. I understand this. Uh, but a group, once again, is defined by their majority, and right now America is they're, – they're morons. I'm sorry. Right now I spit on America. Because <laughs> it's disgusting. You know, these idiots are out here hogging their faces with dollar menus and, uh, you know, listening to little Wayne, you know. Uh, and, and meanwhile, we got poor troops dying in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, we, we, we've got turmoil throughout the international community. We've got economic peril in our country. Uh, you know, we're sitting here socially bankrupt, morally bankrupt, economically bankrupt, and no one, no one has anything to say about it. I mean, if you look at the boob tube, I mean, these idiots are using it as an opportunity to make it some sort of a big show. They're not informing you about anything. I mean, I'm watching the d damn boob tube. I'm watching those supposed media people, you know, that fat-headed, four-eyed uh, Keith Overman, that lispy, blonde-headed Chris Matthews, and, oh, Sean Hannity. Oh, yeah, this is supposed to be the new mouthpiece of the right, huh? I mean, did this give me a break? Oh, yeah, yeah. Bill O'Reilly, that's another one. Somebody who allegedly likes to be, likes to anal probe himself while he's calling uh, producers for, you know, sexual liaisons. I mean, you know, just give me a break, all right? I mean, this is, this is what I'm telling you folks. I mean, this is why America is so stupid. We've been spoon-fed for such a long period of time, and we got so anesthetized with consumerism that we lost our identity, we lost our creativity, we lost our critical thinking, we lost it all. That's why it's so easy to manipulate us like a bunch of sheep. It's disgusting. Class struggle, look it up, you assholes. Anyway, let me go ahead and get on to some news crap. I know that, uh, you know, I've been bantering on. Let's go ahead and get on to some of the things that uh, have been in the news, first and foremost, I, I want to talk about this uh, horrible situation out of Orange Park, Florida. And I'm talking about this uh, little girl who was walking home uh, from school. And uh, she was walking home with her little brother, you know, twin brother and her sister. And you know how kids are. You know, they got into a little spiff and... Uh, this little girl ran away ahead of the uh, brother and the sister, and she was never heard from again. Well, lo and behold, this poor seven-year-old little girl, Summer Thompson, was found in a Georgia landfill 50 miles away. And you see, folks, this just underscores where our priorities are in America. You see, we're devoting all kinds of government resources and government time and law enforcement resources and law enforcement time and energy to, you know, catching a bunch of potheads and a bunch of, uh, you know, heroin addicts and a bunch of damn cokeheads that are going to continue doing it anyway. I mean, even if you send these sorry bastards to prison, there's a whole underground circuit of uh, drug dealing in that circle. So it really doesn't matter. And yet, 80% of the criminals that are in prison today are in prison because of drug-related offenses. Now, what does that tell you, folks? That tells you that our law enforcement are, I mean, they've got their re 
resources misdirected. They are more worried about capturing drug people. And don't get me wrong, we're going to talk about the drug cartel bust later. And I'm all for busting drug cartels because these are idiots from outside the country influencing American economy and American social atmospheres. But I'll get to that in a second. I'm talking about these damn cops in every metropolis in America that dedicate not only a, a whole bunch of time and effort and money and tools and all kinds of garbage into catching block hustlers, you know, uh, you know, catching an idiot who sells, you know, uh, some reefer out the window of his house or some crap, you know. Uh, and at the same time, we also have these same law enforcement, these same law enforcement people in every metropolis across the United States out here dedicating their resources, their time, and their energy oh, to fight traffic laws. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what's saving America, isn't it? Oh, you don't have your seatbelt, huh? $500 fine. Oh, you passed the stop sign. $250 fine. Oh, you didn't do this. You got a broken taillight. You, you know, you, you're talking on your cell phone. I mean, this is ridiculous. I mean, you know, you, you should see the budget of traffic departments in every po police department across America. And take a look at the expenditures set aside for all these new electronic gadgets, all these new cameras and motion detectors and radars and all this crap to catch you in a traffic violation. Meanwhile, when you have all these officers on the street, folks, and let me tell you, down here in Texas, they're always hiring new officers on the street, and they're and it seems to me I can't even drive in a metropolis in Texas without seeing an officer on every freaking corner. And I don't mind that if we're not going to have crimes like what happened to this poor girl in Florida. But you see, folks, these types of horrific crimes that happen to this, you know, this poor little girl, seven years old, Summer Thompson, Walking home from school with all the other kids, just like most children do on a daily basis. And she got, I mean, who, who really knows? The investigators don't know. I mean, they're not releasing whether or not uh, there was some, some kind of sexual assault of any kind. But, uh, I mean, how can this happen in this American society, this supposed civilized society? And this happens far too often. I mean, folks, haven't you noticed that we're seeing a lot more of these cases pop up? You know, these uh, young kids that are getting snagged up for whatever nefarious reasons. I mean, we're seeing all kinds of despicable, disgusting crimes out here that jeopardize the integrity of this system itself. And meanwhile, we have these ridiculous pigs, with all due respect to the law enforcement of America... But you have these ridiculous pigs out here more worried about giving you a goddamn ticket for a noise ordinance uh, or, 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 you know, for disturbance of the peace or something as ridiculous like that than they are worried about capturing these scumbags that are out here preying on our children, capturing these scumbags that are robbing our houses, that are robbing our cars, that are robbing our businesses. You know, these people don't want to confront the real criminals, in my opinion. It, it's what it seems to me. You know? It seems to me that, you know, these uh, officers don't seem to really care about the crux of the criminal element of the society. They're more worried about, you know, somebody who's speeding a couple of miles over the speed limit. You know? And, you know, it, what's really unfortunate is that uh, you have all these officers out in the street, and they're supposed to be making some kind of a difference, and yet they have all these you know, radars and cameras and all this other malarkey, and yet there's drunk driving accidents all over the country. I mean, whenever there's a drunk driver that kills an unfortunate bystander or an unfortunate family, there was never a cop in sight, you know? And, you know, it just, it just, it's just a complete contradiction, and it makes me sick. And you want to know why? Because 80% of the criminals in prison today are in jail because of drug-related offenses. 
And that's, you have to think, I mean, if there's that many criminals in jail for drug-related offenses, then there must have been a lot of dedicated resources on the law enforcement and government end to put them there. All right? But you see, folks, we don't have the resources necessary to scrape up the scumbags of the earth. And whoever was uh, involved with this Summer Thompson murder should be executed. Uh, I don't understand why we, and you know, it's always the liberals. It's always the liberals fighting for the pedophiles' rights, you know, the ACLU and these idiots, you know, who always want to, you know, give some sort of humane treatment to such a humane concept of a crime. It's always these liberals that justify that, oh, well, you know, these uh, little pedophiles, they can be, they can be rehabilitated. Uh, you know, if you talk to them and give them therapy and all this, oh, yeah, a pedophile can be rehabilitated. I mean, that's what these liberals are telling us. I mean, you know, you got pedophiles that are legitimately, I mean, without any kind of conscience, they are robbing the innocence of children every day. And when they're busted, all they have to do is plea out, and most of them get probation. And if they do get jail time, it's nothing more than five years in prison. Five years in prison for robbing a child of their innocence, folks. This is America here. I don't understand why we are not executing all these pedophiles. And you see, what's really unfortunate about this sexual crimes uh, section of criminality, we lump in a lot of per people in this sexual crimes category, and I think that's not necessarily entirely fair either. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, individuals who do sex-related crimes should be punished and, you know, maybe should be in a database. Uh, but I'm not really worried about the, you know, moron who, you know, flashed himself in public because he wanted to be a jag-off. Uh, I'm not really worried about, the, you know, the individual who, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about, folks. You know, I'm worried about the real rapist. You know, and I'm talking about the rapist, and there should be a degree of rape out here. I'm not talking about some, some Mike Tyson rape crap where it's just some dumb bimbo's word against his. I'm talking about a real rape. I'm talking about somebody who was against their will with abuse and force uh, pe penetrated unwillingly a woman's body. I mean, that, that's rape. I think these people should be in the same category as those that are child molesters. And... I don't understand why when we search the sex database, we're getting idiots who happen to be peeing in public or something, and they're in this database. Uh, so I think that what we need to do is make a distinguishing of what the hell, uh, you know, sex crimes are, and then things would be a lot easier. Uh, you know, secondly, I think that we need to kill uh, and execute these damn child molesters at all cost. You know, and I'm talking, you know, no pass go, no collecting two hundred dollars. Get these idiots out of this world. <clears throat> and I don't care what the liberals say. You know, the liberals will say, "Oh, they can be rehabilitated. Oh, don't be inhumane." <laughs> you could say anything you want to, but what happened to this poor little girl in Orange Park, Florida? Orange Park, Florida. I mean, that is a small little pissing ground of a town. I mean, you could probably lay down in it and be in two counties or be in two different towns or something. It's probably that small. Seven-year-old girl walk, walking home from school, vanishes from thin air, ends up in a damn Georgia landfill 50 miles away. I mean, you know, the investigators had to sort through 225 tons of garbage before they saw the little girl, seven-year-old girl, Summer Thompson's legs sticking out of the the damn trash. But nope, 80% of the people in prison today are drug-related offense uh, incarceration. So, you know, at least we have all that dedicated resource putting in drug users and drug block hustlers and all this crap in jail. Huh? I don't know about you folks, all right? I don't know about you, but I, I cannot stand these child molesters and these damn child murderers walk in the streets, I can't believe that we are putting them in prison, and then when we put them in prison, they're not even in the main population. 
There's a whole other ward of the damn prison set aside for these sick perverts. And you want to know why they don't want to, they don't want to put them in prison in the main population? Because most of the people in the main population of the prison were probably molested as children. So that's what I'm talking about. Once again, folks, have no pity on any child molester. All right? I don't care if you have paid your time and have paid your debt to society, you piece of crap. I, I really don't care. I think that you should be executed. Come, I, I mean, and, and if there's any liberal or feminist that's offended by that, oh, my God, I can't believe it. <laughs> well, then piss off, you fruity-ass bastards, all right? You're going to sit here and take up for some damn Woody Allen butt-loving fruit bowl, some pedophile, some some Roman Polanski jerk-ass, then you get the hell out of here. I don't want to have anything to do with you. If you think that Roman Polanski is a good guy, then turn off the damn computer and get the hell off my broadcast, you stupid, liberal, long-haired, pieces of nipple-clamp-loving, butt-plug-up-the-ass-looking, wish you had a clue and had some substance in your brain, slapping you upside your fat, jelly-ass, having chicken-eating corn boy. Get out of here. You need to, uh, child molesters need to be executed, period. I mean, you know, you get the, you know, and I'm surprised, well, actually, I'm not surprised given the litigious uh, situation behind the program, but I want to see more Chris Hansen to catch a predator, all right? I want to see more Chris Hansen going out there and catching these teachers and these law enforcement officers and these disgusting scumbags that are using the Internet to look for preteen girls and preteen boys to deflower. I mean, that's what I want to see, but no, because one of the morons that happened to be tangled up in the investigation of looking for pedophiles happened to be some district attorney. Oh, and now, you know, they're so wrapped up in litigious garbage. Now the To Catch a Predator Chris Hansen investigations are no longer done in, anymore. All they're doing is releasing this uh, uh, the best of and unseen footage and all this other nonsense. You know, I mean, you know, I, I think that we need to do more of this. I think that, you know, people in general, individuals should take it upon themselves uh, you know, to find these individuals, you know, act as uh, uh, children on websites and, 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 you know, arrest these people. Make a citizen's arrest. You know, I mean, put these idiots on camera. I mean, do the same thing that they do on a, to catch a predator and, and get this society back in order, folks, because this is our country. I don't give a crap about these people. I know that there's some people in there's chat room that are like, oh, that's that's barbaric. Oh, well, shove it up your ass if you think it's barbaric. All right. You know what I think is barbaric? Having some moron snag a seven-year-old innocent little girl and sexually abusing her and then dumping her off on a goddamn dumpster. I mean. <laughs> until the end. Isn't that right? You idiots will defend these damn pedophiles, these damn Roman Polanski butt lovers until the end. Unbelievable. Unfreaking believable. Anyway, before I move on to the next subject matter, I just want to say that to the family of Summer Thompson... My sincerest condolences. This is a horrible tragedy, and you are not the only one suffering from this horrific crime. We, as the American people, need to do more to not only force our law enforcement and our government to make this a focal point of the resources of law enforcement, 
but we should also take it amongst ourselves to rid these pieces of crap off the face of the earth. And that's all i got to say about that. Anyway, I want to go ahead and move on to something else. I want to talk about the drug cartel arrests uh, that the Attorney General has recently done here. And I applaud the uh, White House for you know, taking care of these damn cartels. Yeah, Eric Holder uh, said today that uh, a lot of these cartels are basically running drug rings via Mexico, uh, Mexico border region, uh, South America, so on and so forth. And uh, a total of 1,200 people have been arrested. You know, I mean, it's just, it was a big drug bust. Uh, you know, 305 arrests were today, uh, including, you know, out here in Texas, you know, I mean, unfortunately, uh, South Texas is the colon of America. Uh, so, unfortunately, that's where all the drugs are smuggled in from, and as a result, you have a lot of these damn drug cartels down there in the Brownsville Valley, uh, maybe extending up into the San Antonio region, into Laredo. Uh, you know, these... Areas of Texas are literally the colon of America, and they are the drug pipeline of the whole United States, even into Canada. Um, and I applaud the White House, and I applaud Eric Holder for making these arrests, because we need to get these damn uh, scumbag drug cartels off the, face of the, off the face of the map. But once again, let's reanalyze why these drug cartels are even in existence, all right? I mean, why are we even going after drug cartels? What's making these drug cartels even motivated to become drug cartels? <laughs> I mean, what's funding their operations so they can get these sophisticated guns and, uh, you know, move these drugs in, you know, very unscrupulous fashion? I mean, you know, I mean, it's really unique how these idiots get these drugs into the country. I'll tell you, you know that... Uh, I was reading that 80% of the world's drugs are consumed in America because we have such stringent uh, laws against drugs in America, which drives the price higher because it's harder to get the damn drugs into America. You know, the whole supply and demand factor kicks in. And as a result, you have individuals making billions upon billions of dollars. I mean, we all know the great uh, Pablo Escobar story. Pablo Escobar uh, was such a sophisticated drug overlord in South America that's extended into Mexico and into North America. This man was such a drug overlord that he was able to influence governments. And once uh, you know, overlord drug dealers begin to influence governments, it nullifies the whole system at large. And as a result, it makes the whole rule of law and, and, and the whole idea of social order nullified. So as a result, that's why America targeted Pablo Escobar for military attack. And as a result, you know, he was killed. Uh, and ever since then, it's been complete and utter chaos uh, in Mexico and South America to figure out who in the hell is going to be the next Pablo Escobar. And you see, folks, this is what I'm saying. How did this idiot, Pablo Escobar, get to be so big that he was influencing governments, not only in South America and Mexico, but some politicians within the United States of America? How is this possible? Well, folks, because we have created such a black market for drugs in America that it's so easy to raise money. All right? It's so easy to raise money. I mean, when 80% of the drugs are consumed right here in America, and America has the most stringent drug laws, I mean, once again, I don't mean to uh, uh, cite another quote from the last uh, banter, but 80% of the idiots in jail are in jail because of drug-related offenses. And it's still not prohibiting the sale of drugs on the street. Uh, people are still becoming, you know, junkies and drug addicts and and, and, and blowheads and potheads and all this other crap. And the p price of drugs keep going higher. And the drugs keep flowing in. So what I'm suggesting 
if we really want to take out the drug lord in Mexico, why don't we just go ahead and just legalize drugs altogether? That's right, folks. And, and you know, once again, folks, I'm not trying to uh, incorporate uh, reefer into the same category as these other hard narcotics. What I've suggested in previous shows, and I'm just going to briefly suggest here, is that the government should take it upon itself uh, to open up dispensaries in high-dense metropolises to dispense legalized heroin and legalized crack and acid or whatever the hell these idiots are doing. Have them dispense this crap at such a cheap price that it would literally nullify any block hustler, any drug dealer, and any cartel in any other country. It would completely throw off the underworld of, of the economy of the underworld. It would just throw it off. And you see, folks, what this also does is this also keeps track of all the drug narcotic users in America. You can comprise a big database of these junkies. All right. Meanwhile, they have to pay for the the dope. I mean, you know, I mean, you can't get high for free out here. You understand what I'm saying? So they have to pay for the dope in some fashion, and uh, you know, it's going to be obviously way cheaper than the drug lords. All right. And once this happens, we get these people's information on how much drugs they've taken, what kind of drugs they've taken, and those types of things. And then what we do is we allow business owners and corporations to search this database to figure out who's doing drugs. I mean, in a background search, you would like to know whether or not your employee is doing some sort of hard cocaine or some, some, some type of hard heroin. You charge these business owners like, what, 20 bucks every time to do a search on this database. And before you know it, you're accumulating, all right? You're accumulating so much taxes from this little apparatus and you've killed the drug cartels. You've completely put them out of business, so they got to go somewhere else, uh, you know, maybe doing prostitution or something. And lo and behold, you've completely ended the war on drugs. All right? I mean, you know, listen, I mean, I'm, I'm not joking, folks. This is the, a sincere attempt at taking out the drug cartels that Eric Holder and Barack Obama are patting themselves on the back for uh, hitting up today or I should say yesterday, and we have to tell and we have to understand that the whole reason that these drug cartels are even in existence is because our money and because of our stringent drug laws. Eighty percent of the drugs are consumed, eighty percent of the world's drugs are consumed here in America, and the reason they're consumed here in America is because, well, frankly, folks, I mean, we like drugs. We like them. I mean, you know, if we're consuming 80% of the world's drugs, if all the poppy fields in Afghanistan are eventually going to be in the arms of idiots in San Francisco behind a dumpster somewhere, all right, if all the damn pot grown in South America is going to end up in the lungs of some degenerate uh, sitting on his ass in a bathroom waiting for a job to come to him, uh, you know, if, if, if some idiot Colombian, uh, you know, coca leaf field is going to be uh, eventually in the nose of some asshole who's in a club trying to get some uh, stripper to go to his room with him, uh, well, why not have the government not only dis, uh, you know, properly dispense of these narcotics, uh, but distribute these narcotics, manufacture these narcotics, and be able to properly keep track of everyone who does these narcotics? All right, and, and we'll have so much money generated from this. And, and, and of course, we uh, charge business owners and, and, and corporations to search the database to figure out if anybody's going to if doing drugs. And it's up to the employer's discretion on whether or not they're going to hire that damn junkie. All right? I, I think that it would completely kill all drug cartels, all drug dealers. People would actually have to find another line of work out there, and it would piss a lot of people off. Unfortunately, it would also piss off a lot of the assholes in law enforcement that are out here devoting their whole lives uh, into, you know, getting drug dealers and drug users and all this other nonsense. But don't get so pissed off there, officers. 
Don't get so pissed off. We could use you, instead of going out and busting these drug dealers once we legalize the, the, all the narcotics in America, you could be used to actually fight the freaking crime. That's right. Maybe you could catch these damn child molesters and chop their balls off. huh? Maybe you can go out and catch these damn robbers in the act and shoot them between the head. Huh? Maybe you can catch these burglars and beat the living bejesus out of them with a damn billy club. Maybe you can actually inflict the harm on the people that deserve it. All right? That's what I'm talking about. You know, you, you, you see this poor woman that in Texas out here uh, stopped by some state trooper some, with a 70-year-old woman because she didn't comply with the officer's request as if she was such a threat of some sort. She was tasered as if she was a damn dog, as if she was a damn running perp. And she was thrown in jail after she was tased, a 70-year-old woman. Why don't you officers go out and fight some fucking crime? Excuse my French. But why don't you go fight some crime instead of out here, oh, look, hey, look, we got four kilos in here. Four kilos, yeah. Shut your mouth, all right? And uh, one more thing before we go on to the next uh, subject matter. I find it rather convenient that the... Uh, administration is currently uh, publicizing these cartel arrests, these 305 cartel arrests uh, yesterday. And a couple of days ago, they also announced that they were going to allow all the idiots puffing on the magic dragon out there in California and all these other states to continue doing it. So give me a break, all right? Come on. Anyway, we're going to go on to another uh, debate here. And, of course... Health care. And I know people are tired of talking about health care. I'm tired of talking about it too, folks. But the reason that I think it's so important is because uh, now that the uh, bill has moved to the Senate, the Senate is actually reconsidering instituting the public option. And what the hell does that mean exactly? Well, the public option, of course, for all you Nimrods that believe it's universal health care, it's not. It is a mandated insurance that you must pay for. And this is what these idiot leftists don't seem to understand. They are going to be federally mandated to purchase health care. And if they can't purchase it out of their pocket, they're going to be given this ridiculous public option, which is the complete minimal standard of health care. It's going to be the minimal standard health care around. You know, you got a lot of people out here touting this socialism, especially during this health care debate. They're like, oh, socialism is such a bad thing. We need free health care. We need free food. We need free housing. We need... I want you to take a mental ride with me, folks, for a second, okay? I want you to stop what you're doing. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think about every time anybody has ever given you something for free. Every single time that somebody gave you something for free, and I want you to look at it in your hand, I want you to say to yourself, I mean, it, it, did you really want this? Uh, I mean, it, is this of good quality? Uh, I mean, it, is this of something made uh, uh, of intense labor? Absolutely not! Anything that anyone has ever gotten free in their lives has been crap! I know everything that I've ever gotten for free in my life has been absolute horse crap. So you mean to tell me that the precedent of giving out free crap, because that's why they call it free crap. I'm giving out free crap because it's crap. You're trying to correlate this with giving out people's health care and giving out people's houses. I mean, don't you understand that the whole reason why we have big, beautiful houses is because there's a market for it? a private market. Don't you understand the reason that we have a medical system out here is because people are paying for it? I, I, don't get me wrong. I think if the insurance companies need to be taken out of the equation. That's what I keep saying when it comes to this goddamn health debate. But everybody on the right and everybody on the left seems to be sucking on the damn pecker shaft of the insurance companies, and they don't care. They're out here protesting with their misspelled picket signs and their shit-stained shorts and their sweat-stained shirts. 
and their damn uh, ridiculous looks out here, their goofy cockeyed looks, and they're out here saying, I want public option. And the right is saying, I won't keep my health insurance. Meanwhile, the insurance companies are kicking back, wondering when the hell are they going to get paid? When the hell are they going to get your money? Because either way, the left wing or the right wing alternative of the supposed health care debate is going to involve the insurance company complete domination of the health industry. So once again, folks, I ask you once again, anyone who's ever given you something for free, I mean, was it worth a crap? I mean, honestly, anything that you ever gotten to free, did it, did it ever work for a very long time? Was it something you really wanted to begin with? I mean, look, frankly, everything that, or most things that I've gotten for free, I've actually wanted to give back. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'm no offense, but I mean, I'm insulted. You know, some of the crap that's given out for free out here, I'm insulted. Like, I'm supposed to be, uh, be happy about it because it's shiny and it's got a cool color or something. It's disgusting. <laughs> uh, I mean, and you've got these leftists and these idiots that are out here promoting socialism, making you believe that if we somehow make everything free, that everything's going to be better. It's not going to get better. Don't you understand? Won't you read history, you nimrotic buffooneries on the left? Why don't you read about history? It's never been a cakewalk. All right? It's never been a ride to the candy store. You assholes, all right? It's always been uh, an unfortunate uh, chain of events that have progressed into the current progress that we have today. But we are ruining it. I mean, don't you understand? We, we've been living like kings for the past 70 years in this country. I mean, hell, we can go back to the roaring 20s, even, even further than that. We've been living like kings, being individuals, and basing our own prowess on our individual uh, our, our individual energy and our individual labor and our individual work. But now we all of a sudden want to embrace the collective. We want to embrace this idea that, oh, everybody should have a car and everybody should have a house and everybody should do this and everybody should do that. No, they shouldn't, all right? No, they shouldn't. You know what should be going on in this country? I'm talking about the free markets, I'm talking about having less government in our faces. I'm talking about instead of having the government buying the damn GM motors or whatever the hell this crap is, uh, instead of them buying out the banking industry and Wall Street, and in turn they're giving their executives billions of dollars in bonuses, instead of doing all this crap, why don't you initiate discourse with the private sector and try to make them understand that they have an obligation uh, for being in this country and try to, uh, you, you can initiate some sort of research and development plan, which I think uh, Barack Obama has dedicated government funds for, but he needs to initiate that with the private sector. Uh, I mean, you understand, folks, this country has been the greatest country on the face of the planet because it's been in private hands. There hasn't been some overlord monarch or some damn super state over our necks telling us how much money we can make, how much we can have, how much we can accumulate. Nobody's told us that. Now, look at what these liberals are trying to do. They're trying to tell us how to do everything. All right? Uh, they're trying to tell us that, well, you know what? You don't need to eat all that much. Even though, you know, there's been fat people on the planet ever since the beginning of time. I mean, look at Benjamin Franklin, for heaven's sake. He looked like he never missed a filet mignon. I mean, you know, it makes me disgustingly ill. They're trying to pose this idea of being okay with not eating as much food with the idea of equating it to health. But what they're indirectly trying to do is make you accustomed with not accepting as much stuff because they're going to transition this government into a quasi-communist socialist hellhole. And you people are there. You people are there. You know, we lived like kings for 70 years, and now you're there begging to become a peasant. You're begging to become a serf. And because you people are idiots. The American public are idiots. I'm sorry, folks. I don't mean to be so, uh, you know, 
vengeful, I guess, towards the American public, but look around you, for heaven's sake. I mean, you know, Balloon Boy, Octo Mom, John and Kate Plus Eight, Sex Tuplets Mom. And I, I mean, you got all these individuals utilizing their children to become reality stars and you know, they're, they're trying to exploit their children to become the next American Idol and the next American Dancer. And, uh, you know, they're trying to tell their children that, oh, yeah, you, 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 know, you, you need to go out and get an education so you can support me and do this and do that. Meanwhile, what happened to the, what happened to the children? I mean, we're selling them out right now just so we can have, uh, you know, a couple more years of decent progress. Artificial progress, but, you know... Uh, kind of stagflation type of situation that we're in here for all you economics students out there. We're in some sort of a stagflation situation. And unfortunately, you know, the American dollar is losing its integrity because you have uh, this liberal regime spending more money than any other president. Or let's put it, let's rephrase that. This regime is spending more money than every president from George Washington to George W. Bush combined. Chew on that, you idiots. Anyway, we are approaching the second hour of the True Conservative Radio Program. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Uh, before we go on, please bookmark the blog at ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. And uh, please, by all means, uh, check out all the... Uh, Sponsors that happen to sponsor any of the true conservative radio material, because without them, folks, uh, I probably would not be on the air. You know, I, uh, you know, check out the sponsors on the BlogTalkRadio.com slash Ghost website. Check out the sponsors at the GhostPolitics.blogspot.com website. I mean, frankly, folks, I've had so much turmoil and so many leftists and feminist bull dykes and all these idiots that have directed so much hate at yours truly. They've written the sponsors. They've written the networks. They've done all this crap to try to take me off the air only because I am just taking the contradictions within the ideology of liberalism and feminism and putting them on display for everyone to see. Because I am showing the contradictions within this country, all of a sudden I am being something underground or something radical. And it's disgusting. That's nothing of a sort, folks. I'm a conservative, damn it. I'm a conservative. And I want everybody to understand this. I think that we need to emphasize the American family. I think people need to do some history lessons about the American family and how it was an integral part of this great nation. Now we are consumed with materialism and consumption. I mean, the idea of materialism and consumption is superseding our idea of family. We're breaking up our families because somebody doesn't give us enough of materialistic goods. We're breaking up our families based on this whole consumption ideology. Single-parent families are the majority of the day today. The social ills have now become the social norms, and everybody seems to go about their day as if everything is just okay. What's wrong with America out here? I feel like I went to sleep, and I woke up into this warped, ignorant world where everybody is oblivious and absent-minded and ignorant, and nobody has a freaking clue out here. I mean, are you, are you kidding me? I mean, do you have a clue, America, at all? I know that you're so anesthetized with your big car and your big house that you don't even really own, and all these materialistic goods that you want to show off to your family and your friends, and, and it makes you want to, you know, jump around like you're a freaking Mary Poppins and say, oh, yeah, look at me, I'm materialistic, and I'm a success in life, and I'm so happy. Well, if you're so happy, why are you taking the Prozac? Why are you taking the Xanax? Why are you taking the Zoloft? Answer those questions. Why are you putting your kid on Ritalin? Why are you sending your kid to extracurricular activities after school instead of spending some quality time with the kid. Why are you doing this? Because you idiots, you idiots out there in America not only have lost your creative process and your critical thinking, 
but you lost your moral integrity. You lost your moral integrity. And I'm not basing morality on any religious doctrine for all you atheist, evolutionist bastards out there salivating over yourself when I talk about morality. There were a bunch of secular philosophers that held morality at high prominence. Aristotle, Plato, I can go on and on for your secularist philosophers who understood the concept of having some sort of moral principle. Because if we don't have moral principle, we're nothing more than animals. We're nothing more than animals out here. And is that what you are, a freaking animal? Why do you think that we throw people behind a goddamn cage, huh? Because once you break the bounds of the social order and the rule of law, that's what you are. You're nothing but a despicable animal that needs to be thrown in a cage and thrown food at every now and then and that sort of thing. I mean, what makes this country so great, what makes this civilization so great is that everyone makes a contribution. And what is that contribution? Well, not only an economic contribution, you consumeristic, materialistic jerk nuts, all right? I'm also talking about your political contribution. I'm talking about your political obligations. I'm talking about being well-informed. I'm talking about being intellectual out here. You have that obligation. You need to be informed. You need to be politically active. But instead what? You're sitting at home watching the boob tube, right? Yeah. You're watching who likes to marry a midget, huh? Who wants to marry a millionaire, huh? Joe Millionaire, yeah? I'm watching the greatest reality TV in the 21st century. Meanwhile, my government and my whole idea of social order is imploding around us and we're transitioning into some kind of quasi-communist socialist crap and you're just sitting there thinking it's a great day guzzling down buckets of cheese whiz and sitting down there sipping on all kinds of ridiculous grotesque acetated uh, you know color filled all kinds of corn syrup filled water out here and you're sitting there thinking it's a great day in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood you think it's a great day in America everybody's getting free stimulus package checks everybody's getting cash for crap cash for clunkers, and everybody thinks it's a great idea, everybody thinks this is some kind of utopia, everybody thinks they're going to get free health care, I mean, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, you stupid American pieces of crap? Wake up! Wake up! You piece of crap! Why don't you wake up for a change? How about that? Why don't you idiots wake up instead of putting your blinders on and living in your little imagination, living in your little world out there? It makes me sick. 646-652-4869. I want to hear from you folks. I know there's a lot of people listening live. And I know there's a lot of people that are listening in live that are very critical of me. But why don't you get off your fat little cottage cheese ridden, Karl Marx worshipping, Gloria Steinem muff diving ass, and get your ass to the nearest phone and give me a damn call, 646-652-4869, you piece of trash. I'm telling you, every time I get these damn liberals and these feminist and and now I got tea baggers you know going after yours truly I got Alex Jones worshipers and Peter Joseph worshipers David Ike worshipers I got so many people trying to criticize me uh, trying to be critical of me taping pop shots at me spreading slanderous lies about me that I don't know what in the blue hell has happened to this country because what I'm saying is nothing more than rational thinking although it's mixed with common sense also, ass clowns. 646-652-4869. We got a call here from the 740 area code. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing, Ghost? It's Tony in Ohio again. I called you a few days back. How's it going, Tony? Nothing. Find myself agreeing with you more and more these days. Uh, you were talking about health care again, which you know I agree with you on because that's what I called about last time, and then you were – Talking about how we're all overdrugged and overdrugging our kids again. I agree, I agree. Uh, I mean, it's just so much I'm agreeing with you tonight. I had to call in. The only thing I disagreed, and I hope you you bear with me for a second. I, I just uh, wanted to uh, 
pointed out because I think it's one of the few things I disagreed with you on all night. When you talked about uh, Plato and Aristotle, you kind of likened them sort of to conservatives of today. I think um, maybe I'm incorrect about that. If I am, correct me. But I just wanted to point out that really uh, Aristotle and Plato are the first liberals. They were the guys that came up with the idea that a state utopia should exist which is the liberal statist philosophy, that everything should be regulated and controlled by government. And actually, the people that you don't hear a lot about in philosophy, which this is probably boring, so I won't go into it too much, but guys like the Cynics and Stoics, uh, Diogenes of Sinope is a good one. There were a lot of guys back then that were preaching what we call conservatism today, which is to say, you know, get the government out of our bedrooms, out of our wallets, leave us alone, let people be. Violence, you know, is the is the main problem in society, not you know, people doing what doesn't hurt anybody but themselves and just leave people alone. And I just wanted to... No, I'm not disagreeing with you about that, but my point is is that even in their secularist philosophy, uh, there is deemed a important aspect of philosophy that is the interpretation of morality. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, Aristotle understood the idea of having moral principles. Uh, same with Plato and, and all the other, well, with the exception of Socrates, but uh, all the other uh, individuals had a sense of moral principle, mm -hmm. even amidst secular doctrine. Exactly, yes, they did. Even the ones and, I was just talking about. Yeah, and, and, and that's my point, is that even these uh, atheists and these uh, evolutionists want to consider, you know, their biggest hatred towards uh, religion is the idea of moral principle. And their rebellion, and then you can look at any of these uh, pagans, uh, atheists, uh, whatever you want to classify anyone who is anti what is deemed Christian or Catholic or Jewish or Muslim, uh, their biggest contribution to agitating the other side of the uh, faiths, if you will, is to disrespect their morality. Right. And as a result, they lose their complete moral integrity as a result, and they become no better than animals, in my view, and that's why you don't have a, a decent social order other than the idea of the institution of science when it comes to atheism and evolution. I mean, I, I agree with you to a certain extent, for sure, because, I mean, like, they all did talk about morality, even the ones that were self-professed atheists back then. They, they, they didn't uh, talk about atheism like atheists probably do today, you know what I mean? They didn't have as, as concrete a sentiment about it. The only thing is, is that the leftist side of the philosophical aisle, the, the Platonics and the Aristotle people that uh, you know followed those two guys as opposed to the guys I said uh, after Socrates was killed by the state, by the way, um, they kind of started to say that anything the state said was okay. Like that if they you know were a theocracy, then obviously the government was moral so that the government could dictate morality to the people. And the other guys were saying, well, even if we don't like somebody else's morality, the most we should do is is try to convert them over to ours, not, you know, make it a law. And then they got in all kind of problems, of course, throughout the world. Well, certainly, I'm not, I'm not trying to justify his views on mor morality, but once again, secularists, you know, nowadays, the modern secularists, especially the younger ones, uh, and what I mean by secularists, I don't mean uh, secularists in politics. I'm talking about evolutionists and, and uh, uh, atheists. Uh, these individuals are completely disregarding the idea of morality. I, I don't know if you ever chatted with these individuals, but they view morality as a joke. And uh, the more they can be grotesque and the more that they can disrespect all moralities, they feel that they are trying to, uh, I don't know, establish their dominance amongst the faiths or something. I, I don't know exactly uh, what they're attempting to do, but if, in the process... We have the same individuals who are atheists and evolutionists in Hollywood uh, taking us down the same road. And this is why you have a lack of morality in America, because when you have atheist Hollywood and, and, and evolution and all, and all this nonsense that it basically uh, equates us to nothing more than bacteria on a rock, uh, it's no wonder why we have children going into shopping malls and you know shooting each other up, or going into schools and shooting each other up. It's no coincidence why we have uh, uh, kids participating in sexual deviant activity like scarfing. I don't know if you're too familiar with that sick, disgusting, despicable display of sexual activity. Uh, but this is my point when it comes to a lack of morality, when it comes to a lack of moral principles, it's going to throw us back in, if for a lack of a better term, mental evolution. I can agree 
to to the extent that I believe the liberal influence uh, in both uh, California itself and in general in the in the media they produce out of Hollywood is a negative influence on the moral structure of the United States. There's no doubt about that. But I would say, in defense of myself, that I'm not. I was raised Catholic, although now I, I pretty much profess myself to be a deist. I do believe in evolution, but I don't discount the existence of God. I believe there is a God. I do believe in God. I just have a different way of looking at it, I guess, than I used to. But I just, I would like to say that I, I agree, agree with your moral code more times than not. And I, I just, I don't think that necessarily because I, I buy into a theory of evolution. Now, now notice I say theory of evolution because it's something that it's a theory and it constantly is changing because it's not a fact. It's just something that's theorized. But because I might buy into that doesn't mean that I wouldn't share the same moral code that you might on any number of issues. And, you know, the moral code that I'm simply trying to, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't even say that I'm trying to enforce. I mean, it's just the old ways America used to think, the Constitutional Republic. I mean, you know, to each his own when it comes to religious theocracy. The only thing is is that they have to divide their spheres of consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to abide by a certain rule of law and social order uh, as a civilization. Without that, we'd be tribes or, you know, peasants or whatever the hell we'd be. Uh, and we need to abide by that social order while at the same time understanding that our faith and, you know, our ideas of what's going to happen to us in the afterlife – should not at all coincide with what's happening here and now. And that's what's one thing that uh, Thomas Jefferson was very specific about when he wrote the Creator, uh, when he wrote those documents for America. I mean, he wrote Creator, yeah, not he, God. His personal, uh, I mean, he, he actually uh, brought it up as the official seal of the president, but it got rejected by most members. Almost nobody liked it. But so he kept it as his own seal. And I don't know if you've ever read it, but the actual statement on the seal of Jefferson is uh, defiance to tyranny is obedience to God. Hey, I, you know, uh, that's so a it ringing an statement. Yeah, no, no, absolutely it. not. No, I agree. I think that what these individuals, and I talk about the scientific revolution also uh, in, in a variety of different shows, because I believe that, the scientific revolution was spawned by individuals of devout faith. Uh, Descartes, the individual who created the, uh, the scientific method, excuse me. Sorry, I'm a little slow this evening. I guess I, I, I woke up a little too early. You're doing fine. Uh, you were talking about ending prohibition. I'm with you no matter what you say now. <laughs> no, no the, the thing about it is, is that the institution of religion, just like the institution of science, um, or the scientific revolution, it was made to contradict the institutions of religion. The institutions of religion at the time justified monarchism. It justified absolutism and feudalism. It justified this as a God-given right. And the reason that these intellectuals, and a lot of these intellectuals came from the nobility. So it goes to show you that uh, you know, compassion at the fullest degree was still shown upon those that were at the bottom. And, and individuals like Descartes, who created the scientific method, uh, Newton, these individuals created the scientific revolution in unearthing the contradictions within the doctrine of these religious institutions. And as a result, because of those types of ideas being spread amongst the simpletons of the land, the monarchs got overthrown, you know, based on rational thinking. Right. Now, what, I, what, what I'm suggesting here is, is that uh, I think at this point in time, you know, uh, getting back to debating for the present time, that the institution of science itself has become the same institution as religious uh, religious uh, institutions once were during monarchism. Good, good, you, yes. You, you take a look at the H1N1 vaccine debacle that we're having here. I think that's science gone mad. I mean, you take a look at global warming. Uh, that's science gone mad. And I think that the institution of science itself should not be looked upon as a superseding force beyond the political body. And at this point, uh, science itself has become an overlord authority behind the system of whatever government that si the scientific institution happens to be sitting in. 
I agree with you. Those, those philosophers I mentioned as well, they, they always argued that institutionalization of anything totally corrupts it, and, and that is why what you're saying is so right. The institutionalization of science is wrong, not science itself, not reason itself. The, uh, you were talking about H1N1. I love saying this statistic because I looked it up, and it just blew my mind when I looked it up. Because, you know, like everybody else, I'm, I'm watching every TV station in, in the world, and, you know, MSNBC, CNN, uh, Headline News, Fox News, they're all talking about H1N1. So I go look up the stats. Here, 43,000 people have been infected as of last week when I looked it up, okay? 43,000 people out of 300 million, okay? That statistic is, is so small, I won't even do the math for you. And then on top of that, only 300, I think it was 302 deaths that day when I looked it up. So 302 deaths out of 43,000 infected means that this disease is the weakest strain of flu in history. It kills one out of 140 people that catch, that catch it, and that equals out to 99.4% survival rates. It's not even as bad as the common flu. The common flu kills tens of thousands. It's ridiculous. You know, pretty good math there. I'm not a very good mathematician myself, except when it comes to financial numbers. But when it comes to uh, that uh, statistic, I mean, it should be a pretty eye-opening statistic to individuals that are listening in live. I did an H1N1 uh, episode, I believe, last night, and I took a lot of heat from individuals that were in the chat room saying that this epidemic is real and that I'm making light of it, and I'm making a big joke out of it. But the reason I'm making a big joke out of it is because I cannot believe that the government is instituting uh, an absolutism-type authority when it comes to getting certain segments of the population inoculated with this new H1N1 garbage. I mean, as a matter of fact, I know that the CDC and all these other spokesmen and all these other surrogates for these uh, uh, health, uh, public health uh, people are trying to go into every boob tube media outlet assuring the people that this is such a safe and it's gone through more than the average test type of uh, analysis, but I don't believe it, nor do I believe that it's safe to take the, the vaccine with the regular flu vaccine. I don't even get the regular flu vaccine. I don't want to give anything. I don't want to take anything that I'm not entirely sure that I need. I agree with that. I don't get the flu vaccine either for the simple reason that you might catch it one every five or ten years, and if you're going to get a shot every year, you're getting a lot of unnecessary shots for no reason. I think the, the main problem is something they don't want to address, and that's the fact that they have allowed our medical industry to just keep handing out antibiotics for generations until they've weakened and pussified our immune systems to the point where we can't handle anything. We have to have a vaccine for everything, and it's ridiculous. We just need to stay away from it. When I was a kid, I mean, I remember, you know, doing stuff that you probably shouldn't do, but nonetheless, I'll mention it. The, the sewers used to overflow, the storm sewers. You know, they weren't sanitary sewers, they were just storm. And we would swim in that, you know what I mean? When, when yeah, I, I, I remember George Carlin doing a bit about that. He said he yeah. used to swim in the Hudson River where it was just open sewage right there. Yeah, and you, and you never get sick. Why is that? Because you're not a but you don't have a pussified immune system. You actually can take, you know, if something drops on the floor, i got a five-second rule. If it ain't five seconds, I'm picking it up and eating it. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I, I agree. I completely agree with that. We've gotten way too cleanliness. And, I mean, these people are so worried about every little microbe and this and that. I mean, to be completely honest, uh, Americans at this point, remember, we were the first idiots over here in the New World when uh, – we unfortunately infected these uh, Native Americans out here with these horrific diseases and ailments. But even then, I mean, we've, we've built up so, such an immunity to these uh, ailments out here. I think that, you know, we'll be okay unless you have a, an immune de deficiency disorder or, you know, some type of weakening of the immune system. But, I mean, hey, if you get the flu, you just get the flu. I mean, I understand. I've had it, uh, you know, once in my life. It's horrible. I mean, you know, nobody likes it. You can't get out of bed. It's a two-week ordeal. You... I mean, you know, it, it damn near seems like you're going to die. But, uh, you know, with like you said, unless you have been pussified with antibiotics for everything from the common cold to a sniffle, you're probably right. You've built up a resistance to the antibiotic, and as a result, you're having a hard time dealing with these uh, ailments that are not old ailments. I mean, the, we had a swine flu epidemic in 1977. So these are this is not some new genetically modified uh little ailment out here. I mean, we are used to this, and that's what I'm trying to tell people out here, but we have so much hysteria, and we have the government, uh, I don't know if you read about this in Massachusetts, as a matter of fact, I think you might be the one that told me about this, in Massachusetts, they're mandating that, uh, you know, these every Massachusetts citizen get vaccinated for this ridiculous ailment. That's sad. That is horrible. 
And, and I hear that the uh, liberal regime wants everyone in the public education arena also to uh, to get inoculated, all the children. And we have a hyper sensationalism amongst dumbass parents that are trying to, you know, make themselves believe that they're good parents, even though they don't spend time with the kid. They want to make believe that they're the greatest parents because they want to. They want their kids to be the first one inoculated so their kids don't get sick. And conveniently enough, even though the government ordered what was it, a hundred million doses. And the pharmaceutical companies just recently came out yesterday and said, "Well, sorry, we're not. We don't really have that much. We only have was it 50 million, 40 million, 20 million, whatever the hell it is." And it, and what's that going to do? Supply and demand. Supply and demand. And in, and that's why you got vaccines going up. From I mean, they were handing out vaccines was during the summer for 15 dollars. They've gone up to 40 dollars. And they're going to go up even more because of the supply and demand factor. Put. I mean, it's just disgusting. I mean, I'm making all these connections in my head with this liberal regime and their despicable ways of screwing our country, and this is just another one of them. Well, you're, I think you're right, and I think more than anything, this policy reminds me of past policies. Like, and it's been in Republican and Democratic administrations because none of them have been really conservative for a long time. No, you had, no. You had, you had the uh, the killer B thing during the 80s, and then you had the Y2K thing at the turn of the century, and to me, these are less policies about what they say they're about. Like, this isn't, this H1N1 is not a policy to me about uh, uh, health, because if it was, you wouldn't be addressing a disease that has a 99 point, you know, something survival rate. Why wouldn't you address, like, the real plagues of our day and AIDS? And Cancer, you know, AIDS, exactly. That's what I said yesterday. Yeah, Go ahead. yeah. And, and to, to me, like, what they're doing, this policy is directly related to consumerism. They want us to consume something so they feel they have to scare us to do it. And, and they do it all the time with these fake consumer holidays like Y2K. Go buy everything. Water this. Now it's buy antibacterial soap and antibacterial hand wash and make sure you've got your flu shot and your masks and, you know, in case you're in schools and stuff. And it's just buy, buy, buy. For the, nobody wants to think, but it's just buy, buy, buy. Well, unfortunately, you know, uh We've lost our creative and critical thinking processes, and unfortunately, all we know how to do is consume. And it's kind of like what I said yesterday, and I hate to you know, quote Karl Marx, but uh, he may have been right in this regard, that the modernity of the mode of production turning from the worker to machines, it has created the human being into nothing more than a mechanical voke in the machine, and has mechanicalized their labor to the point where they've lost their creativity and they've lost their critical thinking. But the thing about it is that Marx believed that once that happened, and that happened a long time ago, that communist revolution was going to unravel, that it would be the most ripest idea for communist revolution. But the thing about that is that uh, they, you know, Marx didn't anticipate consumerism. He didn't anticipate that uh, consumerism was going to supersede the idea of uh, being revolutionary, especially a freaking communist, for heaven's sake. Uh, I, I agree with that. But the thing about Marx and his idea of communism, I don't want to get into a debate about Marx, but you seem like a fairly intelligent individual that appreciate this. So the thing about Marx is that he had a lot, of, a lot of interesting ideas given the fact that he identified the transition of the modes of production. I mean, this is a very critical thought process uh, when it comes to economics. Sure. Um, now, the thing about Marx is that uh, he had a lot of good ideas, but when he went to the First International, I don't know if you're familiar with the First International. Yeah, it was a union, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was the first uh, European uh, you know, international bringing together of all different sorts of political philosophies. Uh, you had uh, Marx, Engels going there. You had Pierre Joseph Proudhon, which is an anarchist. Uh, you had you had Bakunin. You had these individuals that went to the first uh, international, and 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 they 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 convened together. They talked a lot about uh, political ideas. They exchanged political ideas. I'm a student of history, so that's why I know this malarkey. But then the second international came about. And in between the first and second international, Karl Marx whipped up the old Communist Manifesto, and uh, lo and behold, he was able to manipulate everyone else in the uh, second international to making it a communist-only idea. Huh. And as a result, 
This is why you have communism and leftism, and this is why you have this whole idea of dictatorship. Because everyone who, well, not only did he say the famous quote, dictatorship of the proletariat, but anyone or any intellectual analyzing the, uh, the, the international will realize that this individual created dictatorship based on leftism from the second international and his cornering of the political market in that event. I want to I want to say that because I'm glad you brought up uh, Karl Marx for a second. I, th I think one of the greatest failings that dude had, because like you said, he had a lot of great ideas. He just kind of misappropriated them to the to the wrong areas of uh, economics. I think the the biggest failing that they had, uh, because obviously free markets is the best way to go, is that there is no way to have a uniform type of economy without coercion of a state. And because of that, he had to come up with this whole dictatorship of the proletarian. And while he did really economically was took the monetization of labor away and create the monetization of time because obviously you're going to do the least you have to to get what the state is handing you so you're always going to never you're never going to have the profit motive so doing the least as possible you'll have the smallest possible economy and that's the great failing it monetizes time it makes your time worth more than your labor you wish to have more free time as opposed to spending that time trying to make profits or, or to you know uh, create a surplus of goods on a farm or, or any simple way you can think of it. Um, Ghost, I'm going to let you go, man. I'm going to go ahead and go into chat room. I'll leave you with a quote, though, because you seem like a smart guy as well. Uh, around the 4th century B.C., this guy named Zhuangzi in China wrote this, and I think it's one of the greatest sayings I've ever heard. He said, there has been such a thing as letting mankind alone. There has never been such a thing as governing mankind well. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, thank you very much, Tony. It's been an interesting discourse, and... You can call again any time, my friend. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Uh, anyway, folks, I didn't mean to get off on that, uh, you know, little debate about, or it wasn't really a debate. It was a discourse about uh, Karl Marx and the ideas of uh, certain philosophers and that sort of thing. But it's this type of discourse that I hope that, uh, you know, inspires you to spark some synapses within your brain and go out there and participate in this great government of ours. Um and you see, we do have precedent. We do have precedent that if the American people, if the American people participate in this government, that the government will crack. The Civil Rights Act is the, you know, the prime example. The Civil Rights Act is a prime example of how when the people get behind a certain idea that the government has to sign it into law. And we had LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson, a notorious historical racist, he signed into law the Civil Rights Act. Now, why exactly would someone do that? Well, because he had to, folks. And this is what I keep telling everyone within the upper middle class and the middle class, because my broadcast is not geared towards the poor in America. All right, I spit on the poor in America. All right, I spit on you people. I spit on immigrants in America, and I spit on all the individuals that are taking away the opportunities from those of us that want an opportunity, all right, instead of a handout. I'm talking about the middle class and upper middle class, the bourgeoisie that Marx liked to classify those. I mean, we need to stand up and realize that, like Tony said, free market society is the way to go. I mean, it's the only way to go. It's the only way that one can get what they put in and get what they deserve. Uh, but nowadays we are, and like I suggested, I think you should really analyze this quote that I always say, that uh, for 70, 80, 90 years we've been living like kings. And now in present-day America, because we don't have the, I don't know, the materials that we deem appropriate for us to regulate our happiness, we're putting our hands out to big brother government, and we're trying to transition from kings to peasants. And we're voluntarily doing this crap. I mean, that's what's so amazing about this phenomenon. We've been living like kings, and, and now we're trying to beg. We are begging. We are begging to be peasants. And I just don't understand. I mean, do you want to be a peasant? You know, maybe I should just call some random people right now and ask them if they want to be a peasant. That's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm so upset at individuals right now. I'm just going to randomly call some moron. I'm just going to randomly call some people here and then uh, see if we can 
you know, see if we can get some damn uh, idiots to understand if they're peasants or they're kings or wh whatever the hell they are. I don't mean to use a monarch term, but for a lack of, of a better metaphor, here, let, let's, uh, you know, let me call somebody, let me see, what, what town in Texas? Call, uh, you know what, I'm going to call somebody from the colon of America, San Antonio, Texas. Let me call somebody from there and ask them if they want to be a peasant. They'll probably say, yes, senor. Answer the phone. It's only two in the morning. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, we're going to have that problem. But anyway, folks, let me tell you, I I'm not joking, all right? I'm not joking here. I, we are going to call some people right now. We're going to ask them a few questions about the uh, current regime and the current state of America. And I'm not joking. All right? I'm not joking. I want some answers, and I want some answers from the American people. I'm calling the American people right now. I want some damn answers. Wait. Damn it. Come on, I know you're there. It's two in the morning. The bar's just let out, for heaven's sake. Now, give me a break. And you see, I'm not prank calling people, folks. That's the thing. I'm not prank calling. I'm, I'm going to call because I want some damn answers, and I want to know... Uh, are these people peasants? I mean, are we peasants now? Is that what we're going to be? Are we going to are we going to be some peasants that you know accept a damn um, handout for a stimulus package check, where we change, we exchange our cash for crap? I mean, is this what our country's turned into? I mean, I'm not prank calling people. I want some answers. The number we're talking about now is incorrect. What are you talking about, you stupid ass clown? What are you talking about? It's incorrect. I dialed the right number. I mean, do you, you see they're so poor in San Antonio they can't even get a woman to do the operator system, for heaven's sake. I mean, did you hear that? Some half a fruit bowl. <laughs> Shut up, you San Francisco fruity ass. All right, here we go. Wait. The same guy. I can't. I can't get. A, I, I dialed a completely different prefix for heaven's sake. I can't get rid of this stupid fruity ass. Give me a break. Give me piss off already. Good lord. Oh, give me, give me a break. All right, uh, that's it, folks. I mean, this is taking too long for heaven's sake. I'm just. All I want to do is call some some American people out here so that I can understand if we want to be peasants or what the hell we want to be out here. I mean, that's all I'm asking. That's all. Well, I mean, look, look at this. I mean, these people can't even afford to pay their damn phone bill, you stupid milky lickers. Here, let me call somebody in another. Let me call somebody else here, all right? Well, let me get it. I, I, I got it. Here we go. Here's a nice number. I know they're there, so. Hello, this is the Smith residence. We're not available right now. Just leave a message and we will return your call. God bless you. Uh, how you doing, Mr. Smith? I'm sorry to call you at this hour, but uh, I'm really perturbed at the country at this point, and I'm taking it upon myself uh, to call every house I can in America to have them understand 
that we are witnessing a systematic transition from what we knew of as a constitutional republic uh, to some kind of quasi-communist socialist malarkey. And uh, I just want to know, sir, are, are you someone that's going to uh, abide by this transition into serfdom, or are you going to be somebody who's going to stand up for the rights that our forefathers gave us so long ago? All right, the Constitution. And you see, sir, what we're doing is we're being taken over by a bunch of secularist, godless, atheist, evolutionist pieces of garbage that have done nothing but destroy the social fabric of our country and have destroyed the, uh, the economic foundation of this country, sir. Anyway, I hope you get this message, and I thank you for listening in. This is Ghost from True Conservative Radio. All right, that, that's about enough. Anyway, folks, I can't get anybody on the horn here, but, I mean, I want to hear from you. I mean, why don't you give me some uh, input? There's 20 minutes left in the program, 646-652-4869. I mean, what are you going to be? Uh, are we becoming serfs here? I mean, is the majority of America uh, just begging just to be a damn peasant? I mean, good God, folks. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I, all I do is attempt to try to provide these broadcasts in hopes of trying to get people to be motivated, politically motivated, in hopes to get some sort of, uh, you know, substance out of this program, you know. Because, folks, I mean, if you look at the contradictions, and we go over and over and over and over all of them, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to sink into the heads of people. And, folks, I need your help. The country needs your help. Your children need your help. And what do you need to do? You need to get politically active. You need to organize other individuals within your community. You, you need to unelect these pieces of power-hungry crap that have sold us out for far too long. This is a great system, folks, but we have to participate in it. Remember, it's a damn system made by the people and for the people, you stupid mother... Piece of crap! I don't know if I'm on the air anymore. Am I on the air? I don't even know if I'm on the air. But you know what? I don't get a crap! I don't give a crap I'm on the air! I hope that whoever's listening to this can sink my words into their subconscious and have them realize that they are living history and it's their duty to go out there and become politically active. Go out there and preserve the American Constitution. Go out there and preserve the American way of life. And if you don't, you're nothing more than a serf. You're nothing more than a peasant. And you deserve the treatment that is going to be accorded your way. <sighs> You piece of... Ah, you piece of crap! I mean, is there anybody listening out here? Hello, America! Hello! I'm talking to you! Are you listening? Are you going to continue to be a slave to these damn moochers? These damn single whore mothers? These ridiculous poor in America? These damn Wall Street bankers? Are you going to continue to be a slave? Or are you going to participate in this government? Or are you going to well inform yourself? Or are you going to enlighten yourself? Or are you going to keep yourself up with current events and news? Or are you going to do what it takes to be a responsible, patriotic American instead of waving some flag and in place for those responsibilities? I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of waking up every morning. It hurts to wake up every morning, folks. It hurts. It hurts to wake up every goddamn morning. It hurts to wake up every morning. Don't you understand that, you piece of... God, you piece of crap. It hurts to wake up every morning and to go and step outside my door and see the sour scowls on everybody's faces staring at me. They're looking at me with their disgusting, despicable, sour scowls. And all I can do is say, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? It's not my fault that you made the bad decisions that put you in the predicament that you're in. It's not my fault that you didn't understand how this society works. 
It's not my fault that you have debts that you can't pay for and you have children that you can't afford. But sometimes in life, folks, you've got to bite the bullet. Sometimes in life you've got to take personal responsibility for your decisions instead of blaming them on somebody else. But you see, that's not what America is about, is it? That's not what America is about anymore, is it? America is about blaming somebody else. It's my mama's fault. It's society's fault. It's daddy's fault. It's everybody's fault but the individual. And that's why I'm so hated around America, folks. That's why I'm so hated by all these groups, both on the left and the right and the conspiracy theory nut jobs. This is why I'm so hated, folks, because they know that I am unearthing these contradictions within all their stupid little social circles. And they understand that we are living history right now, and the only individuals that are going to prosper in this new age that's coming forth are those that are going to be well-informed and those that are going to make contributions to this society. That's it. Nothing less, nothing more. And you idiots want to make it some complicated ordeal. You idiots want to make it some kind of a complicated scale out here. Like if it's some kind of a, oh, we have some sort of a grand scheme of things of some sort. Well, you people are morons. You people are ungrateful, and I'm not talking to all of you people, because a lot of you people understand where I'm coming from, all right? All of you people understand where I'm coming from, that how you obtained what you've obtained was fair and square. And I'm not speaking to you individuals. I'm talking about the other despicable idiots that are out here making life uncomfortable for us all, uncomfortable for everyone that just wants to live a civilized society. All of us that want to live in a society... That isn't based on ignorance. That isn't based on some sort of a communist, quasi-socialist idea. Free markets. Careers open to talent. Careers open to talent. Put that through your dickhead. That's what America should be about. Careers open to talent. Not careers based on need. Huh? Now, this is what we're at, folks. This is where we're at. This is where we're freaking at, you... This is where we're at because of you! Because of you! Because of you! This is where we're at. And what are we, what are we left to do? What exactly are we left to do? We're left to just sit here and hope that everything is okay. We are just left to sit here and hope that all this ridiculous debacle that's happening within our country is going to somehow work itself out. But you see, folks, because we've lost our creativity and because we've lost our critical thinking to consumerism, we fail to understand that is our political obligation. It is our obligation to be responsible, politically active citizens of this country. And because we've lost that idea, because we're more worried about looking at the boob tube, because we're more worried about getting on the Internet and becoming pedophiles and looking at pornography and all this other malarkey, we're just warped. And this is why, the, in the description of this damn uh, show here, it says the American public sucks. Because, frankly, folks, the American public does suck. I mean, the American public does suck. All right? I mean, as a matter of fact, I mean, I'm so pissed off with the American public right now. I'm so pissed off because, I mean, look at the amount of ignorance that's just floating around out here. I mean, we're just accepting it. We're pussy pampering it, for heaven's sake. We're justifying ignorance in America. And I don't think that we should be justifying it any longer. I don't know about you, but I just don't think that we should justify it any longer. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I know you got people in the international community, obviously, in the room saying that Americans are soft. Uh, I think that Americans aren't really soft. We're just emotionally unstable at this point. We've dedicated all of our energies as a civilization into consumption. And we know of no other mental process. We don't know how to regulate our emotions. We don't know how to balance our own freaking checkbooks, for heaven's sake, let alone be fiscally responsible. 
We don't understand the importance of family and life itself. We, we just completely have disregarded all these things. And now we're all here wondering why we're in such a precarious situation. I mean, you octomom secretions are actually asking why? I mean, just look around you, for heaven's sake. I mean, just look around us right now. We're pathetic. We're gluttons. We're, we're consumers. And there's nothing wrong with being a glutton, folks. But what's really unfortunate is that we're unappreciative about it. I mean, you know, you go to any impoverished area in America, and you will see fat people waddling their fat asses up and down the streets. And these are supposed to be poor people. These fat, tubber lard you know, eight roll in the trunk ass bitches are out here waddling their fat asses up and down the impoverished areas of America. And, and this is our tax dollars. Our tax dollars are feeding these pieces of garbage. And then we've got these damn uh, Wall Street executives and these damn bankers that are out here that have taken the American taxpaying money. And they've, uh, and they've what? They, they've given themselves big-ass bonuses, and they're going to Democratic uh, functions so that they can donate the taxpayers' money to the campaigns, to the Democratic Party. It's just ridiculous. We've got ten minutes left. We've got some people calling up in here. Uh, 916 area code, you're on the air. Hello, 916. Hello. Well, well we ain't got time for that. Anyway, we're going to go on uh, 770. Yes, sir. How you doing? What's going on? Oh, nothing much. Uh, you know, you sound a little desperate, kind of like me. I'm just not giving vent to the same feelings I have. I feel right. like it, though. Because I swear to God, I, I just put a comment on the, in the chat room a little while ago. I felt like I feel like I've fallen down the rabbit hole. I wasn't following Alice. I mean, this is just madness and insanity that's going on. I don't know. I know how it happened. I know how we got here. I know how it all happened. We, it happened because the mainstream press held up the shield of political correctness for this Marxist idiot we got in the White House. They wouldn't allow him to be vetted. They wouldn't ask the proper questions about him. I'm from Chicago. I've known all about him. I've been studying for six years. I worked in the Alan Keyes campaign against him because I could not believe the state of Illinois would elect such a horror as this man. This man Alan was my Key, state Alan Keyes is a good man. Alan Keyes is oh, a he's good a great man. man. He, I think he's the finest political, philosophical mind in the United States today. He may not be the best politician, but he's got, certainly got the best mind, the best understanding of the tradition of the Constitution and the basis for our liberties. Absolutely. And I could not believe that my state was going to elect a creature like Barack Obama. I just was appalled. It's un unbelievable we got here. But we got here because they refused to vet the man. The only thing we know about this man on the public record is what he's written himself. That's all. And it's all, it was ghost written by Bill Ayers. Half of it is a lie. I mean, the man lies continuously about everything. He's almost sociopathic in that regard. And the press just acts like there's nothing to examine. So it's you're unbelievable. Saying... So you're saying you're actually lived in, your, in Chicago and you know about this man. Uh, have you ever heard about his community organizing, grassroots Sir, organization? I've been studying this or... man for six years, for six years, as I said. And the more I find out about him, the more appalled I am. I, he's the worst thing I've ever seen in the presence. I, and I mean that with every fiber of my mean being to a moral certainty. He is an abomination and a horror. I mean, just, just think of the man, just think of the, man the man's principles and his beliefs. On abortion. They go beyond abortion. They're infanticide. He believes if the child survives the abortion, the proper thing to do is to put it in a linen closet and let it die of dehydration and starvation. That policy would not be out of place in a third right. That's the kind of callousness this man has, which is why he can tell a woman who asks him about his health insurance policies and her mother getting a pacemaker, her 90-year-old mother getting a pacemaker by which she's lived another 10 years, in relative health and happiness, he could tell us just take a couple pain pills. Because he's callous. He's like a Nazi in that respect. Uh, you know, and you know, a lot of people have made this inference, and the actions uh, that are put forth not only by the liberal regime, or would have also been initiated by the White House. You know, I mean, one can only go to that direction when rationally dissecting all the agendas when it comes to the leftists out here in America, sir. So you're right on the, the nail with that. 
I mean, sir, I, I don't blame you for being so upset. I'm upset, for heaven's sake. Well, I, I, that, you know, you, you'll give vent to my primordial emotions uh, when I think about Obama and the Democrats generally, but particularly Obama, a man of utterly no accomplishment except to get elected. I'm getting tired of hearing these people tell me what a great speaker is. This man is probably, in his short span in the, in the White House, spoken more words than probably all the presidents of the United States combined. Can you think of one memorable ringing phrase to compete with ask not what your country can do for you, four score and 20 years ago, we have nothing to fear but fear itself, and all the other great ringing phrases of presidents will ask. Can you think of one other than uh, I could no more disown Reverend Wright than I could my own white grandmother? There's nothing <laughs> this man says. Everything he says is pedestrian, hallmark, greeting card, tautology at best. And it's, all right. it's been pre-written. It's, it's been pretty, pretty, he doesn't do it with a teleprompter. There's nothing that I'm, so even his most vaunted achievement, that is he's a great speaker, really is not true. He's at best a guy blessed with a nice voice and a fair amount of ability to deliver some meaningless words. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but there's nothing he, to him. He's, he's, got a, call, he's got a decent cadence, I guess. I mean, he's I got, no, he's got, he was blessed with a good voice that has a good temper and it's easy to listen. That's all. But you know what? They call him an empty suit. But that's not exactly true. Yeah, he's an empty suit in the sense he's got no real intellect. But his suit is maybe empty, but it's packed full with copies of the Communist Manifesto. Uh, Let me tell you, I've been trying to say that for the past three years now on this show, that this individual, and not just it's not just him, it's a whole uh, bureaucratic consortium of morons that want to continue to grow government so that they can continue to be a success. They can't be a success in the free market, so they're utilizing the bureaucratic systems of government and their ability to manipulate those bureaucracies in hopes of creating more bureaucracy so they can be in power for the rest of their lives. But, but just take what we can honestly say about them. We can really say these people are radicals. They belong to the Communist Party. They're self-professed Maoists, for they're God's called, sake. And so they got, they're, they're, they're calling they got, they got some of them out there calling for forced abortions, forced sterilization, getting animals and monkeys lawyers so they can go to court. Uh, you know, uh, they've, uh, they've long ago declared carbon dioxide a pollutant. These people are unbelievable. I mean, and it's right out there in the open. We're acting like these people are valid, and they make sense, that they're not, we're not just out there going insane, and we should be taking butterfly nets and hauling them off to the lunatic asylum. I agree, sir, and you know what? They call, they're call they calling me a conservative who wants to put emphasis on the American family, who wants to uh, understand that we should some, have some sort of moral principle and understand that we have to participate in this government that was made by the people and for the people, all of a sudden I'm reading blogs about me that I'm some sort of an underground conservative, that I'm a radical because I'm trying to justify the ideas of what this country was based upon. So were you ever a Maoist? It's Duskin. It's well, I mean, were, you, were you ever a Maoist? I never a Maoist. I, 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 well, I, we got I, two people in the administration who look like Maoists. They sound like Maoists to me. Uh, it's just unbelievable, sir. It, I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's beyond unbelievable. Like I said, it's like we all, the whole damn country and fell down the rabbit hole after hours. I agree, sir. Do you have a show or something you want to plug? We got about three minutes left. Before no, we I don't out. have one. But man, you know, uh, you know, I'm glad there are guys out, out, out like you that are at least questioning all these presumptions. Because uh, I, I, I guess, you, sir. I guess I'm, the only thing they can do is to make us believe this is normative. Kind of like homosexuals are trying to make us believe that sodomy is normative. I guess that's what they have to do. I completely agree. They're trying to make the social ills the social norms in America, and I've been saying that for three years, and everybody's calling me a radical out here, and I'm an underground. They're equating me with these leftists out here. It's disgusting. Well, we need to get up here and stop letting them define deviancy down. They're now doing it on a governmental level. They've been doing it on a societal level since Daniel Moynihan warned about it in 1965. It's all coming to fruition now. The perfect storm of circumstances, these anti-American deconstructionist radicals have been looking for. They got him in the White House, a man whose first allegiances appear to be other than the United States, a man for whom Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5 of the Constitution seems to have been expressly written for. He's in the White House now, and now it's time for all of us to wake up and start saying, this emperor ain't got a damn stitch on, he's buck-ass naked. Oh, you know what, you couldn't have said it any better than I could have, sir. 
And once again, I don't mean to cut you off there. Um, i got two minutes in. I want to thank you very much for your comments about the show, and I want to thank you very much for your commentary and calling in, sir. Uh, once again, folks, I mean, we're living in some precarious times out here. Everybody's gone loco. Nobody is thinking critically any longer. People are more worried about consuming, you know, uh, idiotic, dumbass items and services and accumulating materials and they are preserving their own liberty and they are preserving their own freedom out here and it's good to hear that there's patriots like that man that just called up that give me the fury that give me the passion to continue to come up here and to continue to do these damn broadcasts because it seems to me i got both my hands tied behind my back i'm taking pop shots from the left i'm taking pop shots from the right i'm taking pop shots from these damn alex jones conspiracy theorist nut jobs and it seems to me that everybody's just gone completely berserk. Everybody is involved with all these ridiculous ideas when we need to get some goddamn common sense. Common sense like Thomas Paine wrote. Why don't you look that up after the show, you milky lickers? Anyway, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. It's, we got one minute left in the program. Uh, before I go, I'd like for you all to please bookmark the blog at Ghost Politics dot blogspot dot com and also to bookmark the official website of the true conservative radio program and that's blogtalkradio dot com slash ghost <laughs> Woo, I'm out of breath I'm telling you that was that was riveting I, I really appreciate that last caller that it was giving some inspirational theory and giving me some more energy for heaven's sake anyway I don't know when the next broadcast is going to be so please follow me on twitter the Twitter name to follow is Ghost Politics. Uh, please follow me up. And uh, before I go, folks, please visit the sponsors on uh, ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. And also visit the sponsors on blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. Because without them, I'd probably be off the air from all the complaints that I've received. Anyway, folks, long live the true conservative movement and death to feminism. A Napa guy knows the only way you'd give a freshly minted driver a brand new car is if he promises to never drive it. Instead, let him grind the gears and knock over the neighbor's mailbox in something a little more suited to his skill level. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, he can safely drive something that's nearly as old as he is. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for him. That's Napa know-how.